Hello and welcome to the Enneagram video series. Today we're talking with type fives. I'm so excited to get to chat with them here soon, but I wanted to give you a little intro as to what it means to be a type five before we get started. So type fives are called the investigator and they are part of the head or thinking triad. So they see the world largely through their thoughts. Type fives are highly cerebral, they're very observant, and they are very private people. They prefer to think through their emotions internally and rarely let their emotions be seen externally, especially as they're processing them. Type fives find the world very random. And so they protect their energy by gathering as much information as possible and using that to react. They see this as a way of making the world more comfortable for them. They often observe things from the side and are very active in trying to understand what's going on around them. So they can be seen as sort of standoffish, um, but that's not true at their core. It's just the way that they can come off sometimes. Fives are very objective, which is a great tool for them in their lives. When type fives are in stress, they can move towards the unhealthy portions of the type seven. So they can cling to things very tightly. They can become easily distracted and think only in the short term. When type fives are in growth, they take on the positive portions of the type eight, so they can become very outspoken and present. They can, they know that they can lose things and they're not so scared of losing things and they reject the fear of the unknown. So hello to my type fives. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today and talking about your type. Um, so let's get started. I would love to hear from you both about what your favorite part of being a type five is. Being very um, kind of focused on finding facts and really digging into books and things like that. So whenever I have conversations with people, um, I really like to pull in those facts. Like I found this on Google and I read this in a book and I really like to kind of bring in that extra information that sometimes people don't know. I think for me, what I love about being a type five is kind of the independence that comes with it. I very much trust the things that I learn, like Rebecca said, and I take the time to do my research and understand the details. And so when the time comes around to make a decision or to plan something out or anything of that variety, I am happy to do it independently, which I think can be really helpful. Okay. So then the other side of it, what are some frustrations that you find with being a type five? As fives do typically tend to withdraw if they start to encounter a really stressful situation or if they're feeling confused. I find that that is kind of my gut reaction is to push other people away, try to figure it out for myself um, and not maintain the relationships that can really keep you going. Um, and so it does become frustrating to me in that I, I tend to push people away or I tend to kind of isolate myself when I'm stressed. Um, I think fives are also thought of, or people say that fives have this finite resources mindset when it comes to their own time. And I feel that very deeply and it's, it's bad at times, um, whether that's in work or in friendships, I don't, I don't like to waste my time. Um, and that can come across as standoffish. What I've really learned learning about a five is definitely can come off as arrogant sometimes. And I think I have to, to come back and like check myself and make sure like, yeah, this is an awesome fact. I'm telling people some information they might not know, but do they need to know that information? Like, is it really prevalent to this conversation or am I just like being arrogant because I know this information? And so I think that's one of the things I've really had to take a step back and kind of focus on like, you don't have to share everybody, everything you've read in a book or everything you've seen online. Like they can find that information if they want to. When you were getting into the Enneagram and learning about the type five, what stuck out to you as the moment when you really realized that you were a type five that you kind of really um, connected with? One of the stereotypes of a five is they love to read. Um, and I think that's kind of what sold me because one of my goals has always been read 50 books in a calendar year. And I've been doing that for like I don't know, since high school. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe I am a five because I don't know that many other people who want to read 50 books in a calendar year, like just for the fun of it. Kind of the unhealthy aspects of a five and the parts about fives being pretty withdrawn, um, especially in stressful situations. I think now I think a lot more about a five wanting to be capable and competent in whatever situations they encounter. 
Definitely. And it's a great reminder that no type is better than another type. We, every type has its healthy and unhealthy levels. And I think sometimes people think of the five and they're like, oh yeah, like they like to be by themselves, whatever. And they don't see that there are so many amazing things about being a type five. I think that goes for type fours as well. I think that goes for type eights as well. People are quick to make a lot of assumptions. Um, and you all have beautiful tools that bring really wonderful things to a team. So, so fives, enjoy taking in information. You both have already said that um, and they kind of surround themselves with that information. So how does this kind of manifest in your day-to-day -day life? On my day-to-day -day, taking in that information, I literally, I spend my lunch break at work listening to podcasts about like what's going on in the world. Like there's a, a podcast called Things You Should Know. And I literally just listen to that because it's things I want to know. Um, and it's like totally pointless and irrelevant to, to life, but it's like, this is fun. Yeah, I want to know about how a stapler was made. Like, why not? I like to have my research done in advance and then throughout the meeting kind of incorporate the additional pieces of information that I'm gathering from other people. I like to go and do that research on my own um, outside of that kind of direct interaction. How do you prefer to interact with other people? Well, I'm definitely an introvert. Um, I'll own that entirely. I'm happy to go into a room full of people and um, spend time with people. And I do get some energy from being with people. Uh, but I every day need that kind of like me time to go and process my thoughts. My family has actually kind of always made fun of me for needing that me time. Like even as a kid, I just needed to go and like be by myself and read or do a puzzle or something like that. Um, it's like, a, it's, it's just a very important part of my day. Um, and then when I do interact with people, I always want it to be very purposeful. When I think of like interacting with people, I very much am like, I can be in the room with you and we can have a conversation, um, but we're going to need to like get to the point. Why are we here? What is this about? Um, so definitely very purposeful. I also think like when I'm interacting with strangers, I like I like it to be like a happy, quick interaction. Like I'm very big on if I don't know you, like we don't have, you know, it's like, hey, how's your day? Great, nice to meet you, bye. You both are five wing sixes. Um, and so with the six portion, you're still in the thinking triad, right? So sixes are the loyalist. So how do you think that that shows up just as you go about your life? The problem solving aspect of it, I think, when I read about a type five on its own, I see a lot about like diving into eccentric topics and wanting to become an expert on those. And to some extent, I, I get that and I am that. In my day-to-day -day life now, I think that I really like to apply the knowledge that I gain and use it for like very real world specific problems that I'm facing. Just I really stick with the word loyalist. I think for me, like absorbing information and all the things, um, but I really have my core people in my life. And I think when my six plays in, those those are my people and I'm very loyal to them. And so even like my, my favorite book, my favorite movie, like I'm loyal to those, that's never gonna change. For those of you that don't know, there is an artist that's called Sleeping At Last that made a collection of songs about each type of the Enneagram. They're amazing songs, um, but I went ahead and pulled a stanza from the from the five song, and I'd just love to hear your general thoughts on it, if you agree with it, if you don't. Um, so it says, I want to watch the universe expand. I want to break it into pieces small enough to understand and put it all back together again in the quiet of my private collection. What I really agree with is kind of, I want to break it into pieces small enough to understand. Um, I think that's one of the things I really do in my life. It's like, whenever there's a situation happening, um, I really like to, to pull it apart and see like what's at the core. Like if it's a problem, I'm going to, or we're in an argument, I'm going to take it apart and I'm like, what's at the core of this argument? What's at the core of this problem in the quiet of my private collection? Because when I'm going to pull that apart and pull those pieces apart in my, my mind and in my life, I'm going to do it in my private. Um, I'm going to come in my room or whatever. I'm going to I'm going to sit there, I'm going to think about it, pull the pieces apart, and then I'm going to be able to reapproach the situation. 
really the, I think kind of the, the joy that I get as a five from learning about these things is, is for myself. I just appreciate knowing how things work that quiet of my private collection. It really, it's just for me learning about these things. And I'm, I love sharing it with other people if they want to know, but um, I, I don't necessarily need to. So do you think that your being a type five lends itself to the career that you have chosen? Yes. Um, so I am in law school right now. I'm studying to be an attorney. Um, and something that I love about the idea of being an attorney is diving very deeply into the cases that I will be taking on. I don't get, I don't really get bored reading through, I think the, the dense briefs or memos that other people might find extremely unappealing. Um, I, and actually, I, I really like them um, because it's just like, it's a story about the world that I can piece together. And I think, you know, as somebody who is objective, I can understand what are the strongest arguments that arise um, regardless of who my client is. When I really see it playing into my jobs, I think like it doesn't matter what I do because I know with the right information, I can succeed and do it. And so whether it's like something that I absolutely love or something that I hate, it's okay because kind of we're going to take that five information and I'm going to be able to process it and learn how to succeed. Okay. So what is an area of growth that the Enneagram helped you acknowledge? With a five, I think it's this like need to dive in deep on everything that I'm trying to do or accomplish. So now I have to really, you know, temper myself and yes, I want to do research and yes, I want to look into things um, but being able to come to a conclusion and trust that even without having done maybe as much research or thinking as I would like is also, um, something that that's important in, in day-to-day -day life. I think one of the things I realized is like, I very much as a five, um, need to be right. And I think that's something I didn't realize until I really learned a lot about a five. It's like, I always felt that in my life, like I need to be right. I need to find you the answer and it's probably going to be the answer I told you. And if it's not, I'm going to probably like self-isolate myself there for a minute and kind of think like, how did I not know that information? And I think that was something very unhealthy I was doing and ever since learning more about the Enneagram. I've had to kind of take a step back and be like, you don't have to be right. You don't have to always tell somebody this is the answer. You don't have to sit there and look it up. Like it's okay to take a moment and let somebody else have that self win. Another thing kind of jumping off that is I've always felt kind of that there is one correct way to do something. And when somebody doesn't do it the correct way and is still successful, I get very confused. Um, and also on my own, I always want to do it this one correct way. And sometimes that makes me struggle a little bit more in being adaptable to different situations. But yeah, so last question for you all, what is something that you want people to understand about being a type five and how can sisters use that to be a better friend to you? You got to um, be able to give fives a moment to themselves. Fives do self-isolate sometimes and they really kind of need that peace and quiet to rethink. And so when you're with a sister, like say it's a long night of recruitment and you've spent the whole day practicing or you spent the whole day recruiting sisters, your type five sister sometimes needs to just be able to go back in her room, go to sleep, see you in the morning type of thing. Um, we love you and we want to hang out with you, but it, we do need that moment to kind of just recharge and refocus on the day. Fives definitely need that time to themselves. It's not a desire to want to be totally isolated from people. Um, that's not what we want at all. We just have to have kind of that recharge time at the end of the day. Um, um, and so I think the, the primary thing that comes to my mind for my friends is patience. Um, it, I really value when people are patient with me for when I need to take that time. Yeah, I appreciate your guys' time so much. It was really, really great to learn more about type fives with you today. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that we are, that we're all sisters. Thank you so much for checking out this video in the Sigma Kappa Enneagram video series. If you want to learn more about the other types or about the Enneagram in general, make sure to check out the other videos. Bye.